Jetpack Composer comes with a built-in material theme object, which provides a set of uh, predefined uh, colors that follow the material design specifications. It supports uh, both a light and a dark uh, theme out of the box, which uh, makes it a good default choice for many applications. However, if you are building an application from scratch, especially the one that uh, has a unique uh, brand identity and a specific design language, then you will often find that uh, default material theme uh, colors are just not enough. Material theme uses uh, generic uh, color roles, like for example primary, secondary, on surface, on background, and so on, and those uh, color roles work uh, well for uh, general purposes. But they can quickly become ambiguous, especially in a large code basis. For example, what does the primary color actually mean in your context? Is it the main button color, the text color, or the icon color? We don't know that exactly. So that's exactly when a custom theming becomes incredibly valuable. By creating a custom theme object, you can define domain-specific and the meaningful names. Like for example, button primary, icon primary, icon inverse, border error, and so on. When colors are grouped by the purpose and not by visual appearance, it becomes a lot easier to make changes globally. So for example, if you change in your project the button primary color, you will only affect the button components and not uh, all other different components that are depend on that uh, primary color, which at the end makes your project a lot more readable and maintainable. So without further ado, let me show you how we can implement our own uh, custom theming in Jetta Compose. So here I have prepared uh, one design project that uh, consists of a single authentication screen. So we have uh, two different uh, themes, a light and a dark theme, right? And besides that, we also have uh, states, um, different states for uh, our components. Like for example, our button is uh, different uh, in uh, this uh, active state and uh, in uh, this uh, disabled state as well. Plus, we have our text field, which uh, can display this uh, error uh, border. And our uh, text field can also display a custom uh, a border color when we focus this field as well. So it's pretty simple and uh, straightforward. I have also implemented this uh, same uh, UI component structure in the Android Studio. So let me open that up for a moment. As you can see, I have made uh, one uh, custom button component that uh, uses uh, that Material 3 uh, component uh, behind the scenes. And here uh, we are also using that Material theme object uh, by default. So now you will see the difference between uh, that Material 3 and uh, uh, our own uh, custom theming. So when I launch this application by using the Material uh, 3 theme, you will see those material uh, three colors, right? So um, as you can see, if I type some um, a username which is longer than three characters, uh, then this uh, error indicator will disappear. And also if I type here um, the password length which is uh, greater than eight characters, then this uh, error indicator will also disappear for our second text field, and then our button uh, will be enabled. So it's pretty uh, simple structure, right? And um, by default, here we are also using those uh, same material three colors for our uh, custom text field as well. So, uh, as you can see, this is also our application Kotlin file. So we have uh, two different properties for the username and password. So everything looks here uh, okay. We have the same structure as in our design project. So how can we implement our own design system? Uh, well, first we need to, of course, uh, figure out uh, what colors are we gonna use for our uh, own uh, brand identity. In this case, I have already chose my uh, color palette for uh, both the light and the dark theme and for different kind of uh, states uh, of those components as well. Now, there are various different uh, conventions that uh, you can use to name your actual colors. In this case, I have decided to use uh, a convention where I'm going to create uh, separate colors for uh, each and every component uh, in my uh, project. For example, uh, we can have uh, uh, colors like uh, icon primary, icon secondary, button primary, button secondary, uh, text primary, text secondary, surface, and so on and so on. So that's the convention which I have decided to use um, in my project. And I also think that uh, it's a good idea when uh, creating a, a custom design system. So uh, let's go ahead and actually create um, a new Kotlin file in our project. So I will name this Kotlin file uh, Colors. And here we can define a, a custom data class where we can list uh, all different kind of uh, color tokens that this material uh, or this custom system will actually have. So let's create here a data class with the name of um, a custom uh, theme. So uh, I will now define a couple of different um, uh, properties for uh, various uh, color tokens. 
So I will not define uh, all uh, different uh, tokens that uh, our application can have. I will define uh, only a couple of those so that you can uh, uh, see how will this actually work. So for example, we can have the surface color of a uh, color type, so Android X Compose UI Graphics. Then we can add here, for example, a surface uh, light, so a uh, light of a color type. Then we can have here a text uh, primary, then for example, a text uh, inverse, and uh, even many more than that. Uh, here on the bottom, we also have one property uh, so that we can differentiate uh, which uh, color palette is used for a light theme and which one is used for a dark theme. Uh, below that, we can also create uh, two variables for uh, both the light and the dark theme, so a light uh, theme uh, colors, and then we can here define uh, specific uh, colors for our uh, custom theme. So for example, we have the surface color, we can use here the color uh, class, so this one, and we can define here uh, the actual uh, hex color code that we already chose. For example, we can use here this uh, combination of characters uh, 0xff, uh, and then after that we can define uh, the actual color code uh, for the surface. I will also define here um, dark theme colors. So now uh, I will split those uh, two uh, windows right here so that we can actually uh, see in practice. So by default this um, um, light theme will have the surface color of a white, while the dark theme will have the surface color of a black. In this case we can use, uh, for example, um, that uh, hex color code for the white color, like uh, six Fs, right? So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And for the black color, we can just uh, choose uh, six zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And by following this approach, we can also define uh, all those other different colors that we have chose in our design project. Uh, if you're using, for example, uh, some generic color, like for example, black or white, you can also uh, just um, call those um, uh, variables from this uh, color uh, object. And you don't have to specify that, that uh, hex color code manually by uh, yourself, like we have just did, but nevertheless, that's also another option. Uh, anyhow, with this, we have defined uh, all those uh, colors for our uh, light theme and those uh, colors for the dark theme. So the next step is to uh, define a composition local. So to be able to access uh, all these uh, colors from uh, anywhere in our uh, composition hierarchy, uh, we need to use something that's called composition local. And a composition local is basically a way to pass our data uh, down in our composable hierarchy without uh, explicitly passing that data in the parameters of our composable functions. So it's something like a localized dependency injection system just for the UI. And it also works uh, pretty much the same as uh, our material theme object that we are currently using in our project. So on the bottom of our class now, I will define one variable a local uh, theme, and then here I'm going to call a static composition local of. And then here as a type, I will specify a custom theme data class, right? And then in this uh, block, I want to specify the error uh, or the error message that will show up if we um, somehow don't um, provide those uh, colors to this uh, custom theme object. So for example, I will say here, no colors uh, provided. There we go. And now we have a um, define uh, all our project colors, as well as this uh, uh, local composition of. So now uh, the next uh, step is to provide uh, actually uh, our theme colors. So let's here define a uh, theme um, colors. And we can say here, if is a system in a dark theme, we can use um, dark uh, theme colors or else a uh, light theme colors. Uh, where now we need to provide those uh, colors so that we can use them in our project. Uh, well, we need to wrap uh, our uh, whole uh, root material theme uh, object within the uh, composition local. So let's call here, uh, let me just select this uh, whole material theme object, so command plus uh, x, so composition, a uh, local provider. In the block, I'm going to just paste here this uh, whole code. And then here as a uh, parameters, uh, we need to pass our uh, local theme and uh, provide those uh, colors to our uh, local theme uh, composition local. So let's pass here a uh, theme colors, the variable that we have defined right here. So if we are using uh, a uh, dark mode in our uh, smartphone, then we are applying those uh, dark theme colors or else we're using the light theme colors. And now that we have wrapped uh, our whole material theme um, uh, composable function here, it means that we can access now those uh, local uh, theme colors from uh, anywhere in our application. So for example, let's now modify our uh, project 
or actually, uh, yeah, our whole project to use those material colors. First, we can start with a button, right? So let's uh, open up our uh, button from here. And we can create here the variable uh, theme. Then we can call here now a local uh, theme dot the current. And with this, we are able to basically grab those uh, uh, theme colors that we have defined right here. Okay. So uh, now, instead of using those material uh, theme colors, we can now call this a uh, theme and specify those exact colors. So for example, for the container color, we can choose a theme dot uh, uh, button primary. For the content color, we can choose um, text inverse. So theme dot um, text inverse. Then we have a disabled content color. We can choose a button disabled. So theme dot uh, button disabled. And for the disabled content color, we can also choose, for example, a theme dot text inverse. And we can even apply here a custom alpha value, for example, to uh, 38%. So alpha equal to 38% or 0.38F. Okay, so we have now customized uh, some of those uh, button colors. Uh, before we continue, we can also try uh, launching this application so that we can see uh, how will now that look like. As you can see, this is now uh, our current uh, button. And uh, actually, in this uh, disabled state, we can use um, a text primary and not a text inverse, right? So the text primary is actually, uh, in this case, um, the better color uh, suitable for a disabled state. As you can see, and if we now uh, type here something uh, in our text fields to enable this uh, button, we have applied uh, those uh, custom colors uh, as well, right? So it's pretty simple. Uh, let's uh, do the same thing uh, for our um, uh, custom uh, text field here as well. So for the custom uh, text field, we can also uh, create that new uh, theme uh, property. So uh, local uh, theme dot current. So for the border color in this uh, error state, we can just use here a theme dot. Um, a border error. Uh, when we focus this um, border, we can also create here a, a custom color for that, for example, theme dot um, uh, border. So we have a border primary, or we can create here even a new property, for example, uh, border focused. Uh, let me just here add a new uh, property as well. So uh, border primary, uh, border uh, focused. And now we can define here the new color. So uh, border uh, focused. For example, in the light uh, theme, I will use a uh, color uh, black. And uh, in the dark uh, theme, I will use um, color uh, white instead, so uh, white. Now we can go back and we can now choose here a uh, border uh, focused. So now if we scroll down below, we can also see some uh, other different uh, colors that we can customize for this uh, text field. For example, for the focused and the unfocused container color, we can just choose a uh, theme dot uh, uh, surface light, for example in both of those uh, cases. Uh, for the focused indicator and the unfocused indicator color, we can choose or just leave those a transparent color as they are. And for the cursor color, we can just, uh, for example, add here the icon dot um, or a, a theme dot uh, icon primary. There we go. Okay, so now let's uh, launch this application to see uh, how will now that look like. Uh, also, one more thing. So for the surface uh, color of our whole uh, column here, we can specify a, a custom color, so um, right here, so background, uh, theme dot um, uh, surface. We can also define it a theme right here, so um, let's just define it actually here inside. So a local uh, theme dot uh, current. Now let's allow this application. Okay, so now the background here is a uh, white, and the background or the container color. Um, in those text fields is now um, surface light. The border color for those two text fields is now error. But if we type here something, then the color will change to black in this case. And here as well, as you can see, we have now successfully implemented a uh, custom theming in our application by using our own uh, color tokens that we are defining right here. You can, of course, use uh, and define uh, various different uh, color uh, tokens, for example, for a text field, for an input field, for uh, the uh, alert uh, dialog or anything else or basically any other different component that you want. So with a custom uh, theme uh, in your application, you have a lot of more uh, flexibility than with a Material 3 theme. And we can also now uh, try to uh, make some change and, uh, for example, uh, turn on the dark theme in our application. Okay, so now uh, our actual text here is uh, not visible as well as this uh, text on the bottom because we haven't specified uh, yet those uh, colors. 
for those uh, elements uh, in our uh, application. We can open up the app right here. So let's find those uh, two text elements. So welcome and assigning to continue. We can apply now the color here uh, to say a theme dot uh, text primary. So uh, text primary uh, right here as well. And down below for this, don't have an account. So text primary. Now launch the application. There we go. So uh, much better than before. We just need to change here also the placeholder and the text color of those um, uh, input uh, fields. So let's open up our uh, custom text field right now. So we can find now uh, this uh, placeholder. So there we go. The color can be now uh, a theme dot uh, text uh, primary. Uh, we have the content color of our um, uh, text field. So we can define uh, those other different colors right here as well. So uh, content or uh, text. So yeah, we have an um, Anna focus text color. We have a disabled text color, a focus text color, uh, error text color. We can uh, customize those values as well. Uh, for now, I will just specify here unfocused text color to be uh, theme dot primary, and also uh, focused text color to be um, text primary as well. Now let's launch this application once again. So the placeholder has now that. Um, color uh, that we have defined for our dark theme. And if we now start typing here, as you can see, everything will work uh, fine as before. And that's pretty much it, right? So if we now go back to our project design, let me just um, uh, open it up. We can now open up our application. And now you can see that we have uh, implemented the pretty much the same colors as the one that we have defined uh, in our uh, design project. Bottom line, uh, you don't have to rely on Material 3 design system uh, in all your projects. You can define your own uh, custom theme and uh, have uh, more flexibility uh, when it comes to um, managing the colors of your uh, components. Uh, anyhow, uh, don't forget to comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Uh, be sure to like this video, but uh, only if you find it helpful. And uh, thank you for watching.